Hey guys, this lesson we're gonna be talking about how to use Solid Queue in your Rails applications. Now, if you're coming from a different uh, active job backend, like maybe Sidekick, Sidekick requires Redis for the jobs to be sent over. So your Rails app will send a message to Redis and Redis will be monitored by Sidekick and kick off the jobs. Good job is another tool like that, but it uses your Postgres database and solid queue is very similar to that where it will use your database and your Rails application. So you run a migration, add some tables and a process will run and monitor your database for jobs. So what's cool about this is you don't need an extra service like Redis. If you weren't using it for anything else, you would have to add Redis to use Sidekick. And this is a way to just use the existing database that you already have. So let's go ahead and set up an example. I'm gonna boot up brand new Rails app uh, and I'll show you here we are on Rails 7.1 just for reference and we can run Rails new and we'll say solid queue example is our application name. So we'll come back in just a second when this is created and we'll add solid queue and queue up a few jobs. Alrighty, let's go into our solid queue example and we'll bundle add solid queue to add that to our gem file. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then the next step is to install the migrations and then db migrate. This may actually change in the future. There probably will be a install script that will go ahead and do this because one other thing that it currently requires is a configuration file. So we'll run this to install the migrations. Then we can say rails db colon migrate to add that to our database. Um, I'm using uh, SQLite in this example, but you can use uh, Postgres or MySQL and um, other support for MS SQL and things will probably be added soon. Um, and there will be other improvements here as well. But here you can see that it creates one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tables uh, in order to manage your job. So you'll be able to actually, you know, look at these later on and see what they're doing. Um, as we queue up jobs and stuff, but let's go ahead and uh, test out the command. And I'll show you that right now it will crash and say that we do not have a configuration fa um, file found. So we can touch config solid queue.yml and now our solid queue process can run. So it will work just fine. It will start up a dispatcher and a worker by default that will listen to all of the queues. And the dispatcher is basically the supervisor that's maintaining all of the workers and keeping track of the processes and everything. Um, and the workers will actually do the processing of the job. So this will listen to all of the queues by default and have a thread pool size of five and set up one process for it um, with the default config. And you can always go through and clean that up uh, for your use case and say, we need you know 10 processes and they need to handle different queues and all that good stuff. Um, but we're gonna stick with those defaults for now. So now we can run um, a Rails application and create some jobs. So we can either you know generate a mailer Let's say a mailer, we have a user mailer and we want to notify them of maybe a receipt for payments. We might also want to just create a job, like an import job that has something that it needs to do. And these, we will be able to open up the Rails console. Well, actually first, let's go into our um, config environments. So we'll do this later, we'll go into config environments and you will set in here a config line config active job queue adapter equals solid queue that's going to be the line that does the magic of wiring up active job to solid queue and it will start pushing jobs to the database then we need that separate process to actually run the job workers and the dispatcher so that it will do the work because if we just leave it at this, Rails is going to queue up jobs and nothing will be listening to them unless we start that other process. And you can go into your test environment and add this here and add it in production. Maybe your test environment, you want to keep the test adapter um, and that is totally fine, easy to work with, um, but in production you'll do this as well. All right, so let's leave it out of test and use the test adapter for now, and we'll set up solid queue in development. 
All right, so now we can go and look at our Rails application. So we'll open up the Rails console and we'll say user mailer dot receipt deliver later, which will queue up the job. You'll see that it says that it was handled by solid queue, solid queue and queue to job, the default queue name, it has an active job ID and all of the other information from action mailer. It enqueued the mail delivery job and gave it back to us and said, here you go. Um, we can also set up that um, import job and we can call perform later on it. We don't do anything with these jobs yet, but um, it will queue it up and we can take a look in our database and see what's in there. So because we're using SQLite, we actually will have under the storage folder, our development.sqlite database. So this is what we wanna open in um, a tool like Table Plus so we can actually poke around and see what's going on here. The first table that we've got is the blocked executions. So let me resize that. Blocked executions table, claimed executions, failed executions, solid queue jobs is where we can see our two jobs that we just added. So nothing is being processed yet. So the jobs are just sitting here. They have the arguments that were given priorities, which you can use to say this job is higher priority than another. Um, and then it also has the active job IG, ID, when it was scheduled at, and when it was created and updated, and it will keep track of when it was finished as well. So this is all of the job information. We can have solid queue pauses, so it looks like we'll be able to pause a job and uh, you know halt its execution in the middle. Uh, we have our processes, so if we start up our uh, solid queue workers, that is going to show up in here. We'll see the last heartbeat and it keeps track of those things. We also have our ready executions and scheduled executions. So we can have jobs and these executions. And when we create those jobs, it sets up an execution automatically for us. So we might create a job and then schedule it for later. It might be a recurring as well. Um, you know, this is set up to handle a lot of that stuff for us. We don't need to know much about how it works internally but uh, we will want to know about these priorities and the queues um, because the queues can also dictate how um, the jobs are handled. And I know that that is mentioned in here as well. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here it is, queue orders and priorities. So if you specify a list of queues for a worker, these will be pulled in the order given, such as if you chose real time and background, the jobs from real time will always take precedence over those. But you can also give integers priorities to the job. So you can say there is a um, priority of zero or priority of one. The priori priority of zero will always be more important and they start at zero, kind of like an array does. So zero is the first item, one is the next, and so on. Um, so that is that, and that's where we see that priority here in our executions. And now we can go run our command to start solid queue. So we've got Rails running in a, uh, we would have Rails running like in a server in a different process. And we'd be pushing jobs and it could become from, you know, rake tasks or anything else, just like you would use active job for. And we'll see that it's performing these two jobs and that they finished. Job number two was faster than the job number one, which was the email and uh, it picked up those two jobs and just prints out the typical output that you would see normally like in your sidekick uh, logs as well. So that's really all there is to it. There's not a ton of you know interesting things that we can explore. We see that these processes now are visible here so we can query our database if we wanna see in a dashboard if we have or how many workers we have and what they're doing we can actually just query the database instead of having to talk to you know another process in Linux or something. We have all that information actually directly available in Rails models, which is actually super cool. Um, and also, one of the things that uh, is discouraged with Sidekick is like trying to delete a job or something like that. We will have easy access to the database here, so jobs probably 
you don't want to mess with them much. But if you ever, you know, made a mistake and needed to go edit a job's arguments or change the priority or something, you have access to this in your database and you could do that if you needed to. Um, so this is a pretty cool tool. What's great about it is we don't need another service running or anything like that. It is right there for us in our database um, and doesn't require you know, Redis or something else. Uh, another cool thing that I wanted to point out is that it has a plugin for Puma. So in your Rails applications, if you don't want to run this as a separate process, a lot of us do now. We have proc files and use CSS and JS bundling or whatever. So we end up having to run multiple processes. But uh, this is a cool feature that we can use. If we go into VS Code, we can go into config, uh, puma.rb, and here at the bottom, next to plugin temp restart, which will listen for the temp restart file to be touched and restart Rails. Um, we can also add this plugin as well. When Puma starts up, it is going to also run solid queue. And when Puma shuts down, it will also stop solid queue. So here you can see when we boot up our Rails app with Rails server, we get a lot of logs from uh, solid queue processes monitoring the database. By default, it's checking every like 100 milliseconds or something, like 0.1 seconds, I think was the default uh, that I saw in the code earlier. So it's going to make lots of queries to your database, but not that fast. And they're very fast, or not that often um, because your databases are super performant and uh, it's just keeping an eye on them. So when you queue up a job, it should take you know a tenth of a second before it starts running and gets detected. So it will be very fast and performant and just live alongside of everything else. And we can control C, Puma will shut down solid queue and it will shut down the Rails application as well, all in a single process, which I thought was super duper handy to have as a feature if you weren't using a proc file and already managing separate processes. This is nice and built in. That was always something that if you deploy Sidekick you really want to have it running and monitored by something else. And now this is, you know, a good way of doing that. And I think maybe even Sidekick can do this as well to these days. But um, that is a quick introduction to Solid Q. There's not a lot of, you know, features to it because it's basically just seamless behind the scenes. You need to run a process, add a few tables to your database. You're good to go. That's about it. It is already using the active back active job backend that... Uh, or interface that you're already used to. So there's really nothing for you to do. Um, I highly recommend checking this out. I know this is going to be a big thing going forward. It'll probably be built into a lot of applications because it's simple and easy to use the database service that you've already got. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions about solid queue or anything like that, let us know in the comments below and we'll take a look and uh, try and get those answered.